Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be self-doubt and self-reliance. Well, I've got two different emails I'm going to go through with you today, and both of these guys are struggling with their purpose and their mission in life. Both of them believe they have a pretty good idea of what they want to do. The first guy, he said when he was born, he was born with motor nerve damage, which basically leaves one of his arms doesn't function properly and so he says he's always wanted to be a, initially he wanted to be a Paralympic swimmer and now he's changed to Taekwondo but he's been doing that for about six months and now he says hey I'm 21 maybe I'm too old I'm starting too late in life he's like what do I do and the second guy says he knows what he wants to do in life he's got he says he's got his purpose and his mission all figured out but he says every time he starts taking action towards it he gets sidetracked and then he just gets caught up doing other BS things. And so we're going to talk about today is the importance because I do a lot of phone sessions with men and women who are trying to figure out why am I here? What's my purpose? What am I – what should I spend my time doing with my life? And a big part of what I do when I go through with them – and I've talked about this in other videos I've done in the past on discovering your purpose – Discovering your purpose as a process as well as discovering your driving force needs. And every single person that's watching this video, including you, has a unique combination of things that you're interested in, that you're curious about, that you're passionate about. And a lot of times when I start asking people questions and they tell me about a job they may have worked in the past, I always ask them, well, tell me. Are there any aspects of that job, the, the current job you have or a job you used to have that you could say you really loved? Meaning on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being you love it, 1 being you hate it, is any part of what you've done or tasks that you had to do or parts of your job description that you could say I absolutely love this part of it? And sometimes when I'm, I'm doing this exercise with people, we may be pulling things from two or three jobs that they've had in the past where each job may have had a lot of different things they were supposed to do but there only were maybe one or two aspects of it that they really loved. And it's important to get all those things you're driving for needs down as far as the things you really love about what you're doing. And I also focus on asking them questions of things that maybe they don't do or maybe hobbies that they have or things they're really interested in. And then I ask, okay, well, what is it that you love about it specifically and once in the average person ends up when the list is all done usually has anywhere from five to about 15 or 16 things on average that I see my clients tend to come up with and that's a starting point for figuring out your purpose and mission in life and if you are missing some things or don't have those things down on your list or you say all oh, those aren't really relevant to what I'm doing or what I think I want to do if you got the wrong driving force needs down, it's actually going to take you in the wrong direction and take you away from what you want to do. And sometimes in life, especially like when you're young, both these guys, I think they're pretty – one of them, he's 21. The other one, I assume he's probably in his 20s as well. And when you're young and you don't have lots of life experience or you haven't worked a lot of different jobs or different careers yet, you really don't know what you don't know yet. And the key is to start working in the things that you're curious about. Go and talk to people that maybe have the kind of business that you think you'd like to have someday and shadow them for a day or two. Find out what the day in and day out details of that job are really like before you go off to college and get a degree and especially if you're thinking about accumulating a lot of student debt because if you pick the wrong thing to do, if you pick things that you like instead of things that you really love, as soon as you hit an obstacle or the first set of challenges, because you're really not committed to it, you'll just quit and you'll give up. And that's a, you know, for the average person, when that happens, they go, oh, well, I guess I'm, I just need to earn a living. I need to go and get a paycheck because it's got to be realistic and pay the bills. And then they associate a lot of negative things, a lot of limiting beliefs, what, what they really want to do. And since they associate so much pain with with doing that, they simply move away from it and move in another direction. So what I'm going to discuss with you today 
and I've talked about this in other articles in the past, but this is so important because if you want to become better with talking to women, if you want to be better better at dating, you want to be better at interviewing when you're trying to get a job that you want or getting investors to invest in your company or just convincing people to go along with what you want, you have to get the why correct. In other words, why do you want what you want? Because if you don't have a com- emotionally compelling group of reasons why you want it, in other words, then those reasons have to be on a scale of 1 to 10. they got to be a 10. If they're a 6 or a 7, you'll stick with it for a while. But when it becomes difficult because you're really not emotionally committed to it, you'll just give up. In other words, if you don't love what you're doing, if it doesn't feel like playing to you, if it doesn't feel easy and effortless and fun and exciting, eventually you'll get tired of it. And you'll just give up. And the key is to get your why. In other words, you got to know what you want. And most importantly, you got to know why you want it. Because a lot of people say, oh, I want to be rich. I want to have a million dollars. Well, why? Why do you want a million dollars? And the average person focuses, they think if they focus on becoming rich, that's what will make them rich. And that's not correct. Any successful rich person that's made it in life will tell you that it is the result of doing something you really love because when you really love something, it doesn't feel like work. You'll work day and night. You'll think about it 24-7 every fucking waking moment. It will be in the back of your mind and you'll be trying to learn about it. You'll be trying to improve your skills. You'll be studying. You'll be talking to other people. You'll literally be consumed with what you love and what you have a passion for. When you apply yourself in a directed and focused way, with something that you love and you have a passion for and because repetition is the mother of skill, eventually you will develop your gifts, your skills and your talents to the point where, like Maya Angelou said, people won't be able to take their eyes off of you. And making money really is the direct result of adding a lot of value either through a product or some kind of service. I think it was Zig Ziglar that said, if you help enough people get what they want, you will get what you want. I mean, look at the business that I have. I give most of, I give everything away that I know and that I teach through my videos and my articles on my website. And I, in essence, prove myself to people that are showing think, this fucking shaved headed bastard, what the hell does he know? And then they start reading the book, they start watching some videos, and they start to see some correlation between things I talk about and the answers, the emails that I talk about with what they've seen in their own life. And they go, oh, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, I can kind of connect the dots a little bit. And so they read a little bit more. They watch a few more videos. And eventually at some point they go, wow, this fucking dude really does know what he's talking about. Let me get that book. Let me read the book. Let me get the audio book, whatever it happens to be. And you know what? I'm still – even though the audio book has been out for about three and a half weeks now, I'm still getting people going, hey, dude, when's the audio book coming out? I get emails and I get – I see comments either on social media or on YouTube want to know when my book's coming out. Well, it's out. It's on audible.com. It's on amazon.com and it's also in the iTunes store. So all you have to do is go there and Google my name, Corey Wayne, and you'll find it. And if you do the audible.com membership, you can actually download it for free. It'll cost you nothing. And if you're an avid audible book listener, like I happen to be, they got a great membership plan. It's like $14.95 a month. You get one credit a month. For an audiobook, and, if, and like now, I think their latest promotion is you get the first month is free, and then the second month you also get a free book. So you literally, when you start the membership, you get two Audible books for free, and you get to choose which ones you want. But again, it depends on what country you're in and where you're at, I suppose, because the offers and the prices will vary by country. But across the board, you get one month free. I mean, it's a great fucking deal. And on top of that, if you download two or three books in a month. You get 30% off any of them that you buy. So it's a really great – if you're into audiobooks, I highly recommend that you do the membership because you'll save yourself a shitload of money. So with that said, I have a quote that I wrote on this particular topic because this really all is about having proper emotional leverage upon yourself. And if you remember this little pros and cons notebook, we're going to talk about this in a minute. This is another great thing if you have a goal or something that you want to accomplish. The pros obviously on this side here are why. What are your positive reasons why you want it and what are you going to get 
once you achieve it? What are the positive reasons? And obviously the cons are what's the pain you're going to experience? What's it going to cost you a year from now, five years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now if you don't do what you know you need to do right now today? And this is a really great tool. It's a company called Knock Knock. You can get them on Amazon.com. And plus these are tear sheets. So you can actually tear these right in half and always have them to review. It's a really great tool. So let's go through the quote that I wrote. And the quote says, in order to accomplish your mission and purpose in life, you must have emotional leverage upon yourself. People will do more to avoid experiencing potential pain in the process of achieving something that they really want than they will do to experience the potential pleasure of achieving it. In order to overcome your fears, limiting beliefs, and self-doubts, you must have emotional leverage upon yourself to take action in spite of them. That means you must focus on the potential pleasure and all of the emotionally compelling rewards of what it will be like when you achieve your grandest goals and dreams. You also must focus on the potential pain and negative consequences that you will experience if you do not take the action you know you need to take in order to make success possible. With proper emotional leverage, you naturally will move towards what potentially feels good and away from what potentially feels bad. So let me explain that. So let's take the example of somebody that says, you know what, I want to lose weight and I want to get in shape. And then they go and they, they join a gym. And so typically what happens at some point, they think, oh, I'm really sore, I'm tired, I don't feel like going to the gym. And so they start focusing all the things that they don't like about it or they're not feeling good. Or, you know what, I've been going to the gym for two weeks and I really haven't noticed anything. I don't feel like I'm getting any results. This is a waste of my time. I'm not meant to be in good shape. You know what? Fuck it. I'm having a Big Mac attack. I'm, you know what? Supersize me. Give me the fucking supersize fries and the, and the Biggie Coke as well. I'll take all of the above. And so they associate more pleasure with eating the junk food and blowing off the gym. And then they never really think about why did they start it in the first place. So if you flip your thinking around, okay, well, if I don't go to the gym, what happens? Well, my personal trainer is going to be busting my balls. And all my friends and family that I told I was going to lose weight, now they're going to roll their eyes and go, see, I told you you wouldn't stick with it. And that person that you'd love to date or that you, the kind of person you'd like to attract in your life someday, well, it's going to be a lot harder if you're not in shape because people that love themselves and are happy, they tend to be healthier and they tend to take better care of their bodies. And the more in shape you are, the more attractive you're going to be. I mean, it's just it's a fact of life. And so if you think in terms of what's the pleasure you're going to get from working out? I'm going to feel better. I'm going to be healthier. I'm going to look better. I'm going to be more attractive. People are going to tell me, wow, you really look great. Wow, that weight you dropped is amazing. Good job. How did you do it? You're going to inspire other people. If you focus again on all the pros, all the good things, all the benefits, all the positive emotions that you will experience if you do what you know you need to do and also the potential pain. Okay, so if I don't work out today and I blow off the gym, what are the negative consequences? Well, my trainer's going to bust my balls. I'm not going to lose the weight that I want. I'm not going to get in shape. It's going to make it harder to attract the quality person that I really want into my life. And then five years from now, I might still be single. Or five years from now, I might not be married and have a family or whatever happens to be. I might not have kids. What are the consequences, the negative consequences 20 years from now? 20 years from now, I might be three times the size that I am right now. And you think in terms of all the pain that you're going to experience if you don't get off your ass right now and go to the gym like you're supposed to as opposed to what the average person does. They think about, oh, that Big Mac's going to taste so good. Oh, that fucking Ben & Jerry's. Oh, God, I just die for it. i got to have some Ben & Jerry's. I'll go to the gym tomorrow. And so they, what happens is they do the instant gratification. They focus on the pleasure of that. And then afterwards, they feel shitty. The next day, they wake up. And they realize that the five pounds they lost over the last two and a half weeks, they just gained it all back in a day or two because they binge ate. And then they felt worse. And since they felt worse, what do they do? They eat more and they gain more weight. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's really – remember, what you focus on expands. And by focusing on the right things 
by focusing on the positive pleasure you're going to gain even when you don't feel like taking action, that gets leverage upon yourself because the emotion compelling reasons why you want something are so much more pleasurable than the pain of actually taking action or doing what you need to do. It's like literally flipping the script, looking at things from the opposite perspective. Because remember, people will do more to avoid pain than they'll do to gain pleasure. So if you actually write it down and you have the reasons on a pad like this, when you're feeling like being lazy, you can look at your list. You can have it on your medicine cabinet. You can take a picture of it and have it on your phone so it's always with you. And it's, some, it's a constant reference. Look, all right, why am I doing this? And you remind yourself of why. And by having emotional leverage upon yourself, then you'll take action and move towards what you want. So let's go through the first guy's email. He says, hi, Mr. Wayne. I've read your book and I've been watching your videos. You're doing an amazing job. Thanks for all you do. Now, I was watching your video, How to Think Like and Become a Champion, and I decided to ask you how I can overcome self-doubt. Well, at the end of the day, no matter what you do in life, that little voice in your shoulders is still going to say, you can't do it. It's never going to fucking work out. You're always going to have doubts on some level. But if you have emotionally compelling reasons why you want something and they're really powerful, in other words, on a scale of 1 to 10, they're a 10. In other words, you have more positive reasons to do something than you do to not doing, doing it. And by writing the list down the way I've just described, you'll also say, wow, not doing anything, that's really painful because all those consequences suck and I don't want to experience that. So you naturally will move towards the things that you want. That's why it's so important because if you have – if you're doing something right now because you like it, meaning on a scale of 1 to 10, something's only a 7 out of 10, that's not an emotionally compelling reason why. It will get you – further than somebody that has a one or a two out of ten as far as an emotionally compelling reason. But in order to stick with something, to really love it and have a passion for it, it's got to be a ten out of ten. Otherwise, it shouldn't be on your fucking list. In other words, you shouldn't be wanting to do what you're doing if it's not an absolute ten. Let me tell you my story. I have an arm disability since childbirth. It's called brachial plexus injury. I cannot use my arm properly due to damage on my motor nerves. I was a para swimmer and I wanted to be a Paralympian. So my question is, why do you want to be a Paralympian? I want to get a gold medal or I want to get a silver medal or I want to win. Okay, well how emotionally compelling is getting a medal on a scale of 1 to 10? If you go, well, it's a seven, that's not an emotionally compelling reason. That means you're not really committed to it. So you have to have on a scale of one to ten, all your reasons why you want something have to be a ten. Otherwise, as soon as you run into the first obstacle or roadblock, you just give up. But afterwards, eight months ago, I realized that I do not enjoy swimming anymore even a little bit. So in other words, you weren't really committed to swimming. But the good thing is you tried it. You were curious about it. You wanted to see how it was and you did it. That is important. Why? Because imperfect action is better than no action at all. Especially when you're young and you don't have a lot of life experience doing a lot of different things. You think, hey, I'd really like to be a swimmer. So you go and try it and you realize, man, I'm not really committed to this. Sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you'll think a really a job is really cool, and then you go and work there. And after you know, it might be cool for the first month or so. Like when I first started attending bar, I loved it. For the first six weeks, I was like, "This is fucking great." You know what? Fuck construction management. I don't even want to finish my degree. I'll just be a bartender the rest of my life. This is great. All my friends were coming. I was I was meeting girls left and right. It was fucking great. And after about six weeks, I was like, "I fucking hate this shit. This sucks." Especially when it got real busy, people are smoking in there. It's like this is before they changed the laws. It was like early '90s, so people were. I mean, it was just like I just remember that I go home every night and I just smell like a fucking ashtray because people sit in a bar and <sighs> fucking chain smoke. But it's like I explored it. I checked it out, and you know, even though I felt like just quitting that semester, I was thinking, telling myself, "Yeah, I'm gonna take this semester off and this is over and just focus full, you know, and just strictly tend bar and party and enjoy my life." after about six weeks, I was like, this sucks. And then what did I do? 
I continued with my construction management because I nothing was more emotion compelling than what I was doing. And then I got to the point where I really fucking hated Tenant Bar. So sometimes you got to check it out and see what it's like. And if you really love it and you really have a passion for it, you'll stick with it. And if you think something's going to be great, sometimes it won't turn out to be so great. And that's okay. At least you know. What the average person does is then they get stuck. They get stuck in that shitty job because they like the money that they're making. And they go, well, i got to pay my bills. And then they don't try to grow beyond that. They don't do anything else. They don't change. It's like when you hit the wall and something sucks, it's time to change something. It's time to go explore something else. So line up something different that's more emotion compelling than what you're doing. Get that job and then put in your two weeks notice. You should never just quit your job and then have no source of income hoping you'll figure it out. That's just dumb. So I changed my sport and I decided to move on to Taekwondo six months ago. Actually, I'm in good shape and I feel like I have enough potential to be the best. Well, the only reason you should be doing Taekwondo is because you absolutely love Taekwondo and you want to fucking master it. And it really shouldn't matter whether or not you win a medal because winning a medal at Taekwondo is just a side effect of doing something you really love, which would be Taekwondo. So in other words, on a scale of 1 to 10, how emotionally compelling is Taekwondo? If it ain't a 10, you're wasting your fucking time, dude. But you got to ask yourself, is there anything that you love about Taekwondo that you could – is there an aspect of training or ta- about Taekwondo that you love? In other words, you could say definitely on a scale of 1 to 10, it's a 10. It's important to write those things down. In other words, what's, why is being a Paralympian such a big deal to you? Why do you want it? He says, but deep inside, since I started to do it lately, I'm 21 years old and I feel like I'm late and I don't have enough time to achieve my goal. I cannot overcome it no matter what I do. Can you give me some advice? Well, like I said, whether it's swimming or taekwondo, you should only be doing those things if you really fucking love sports. If you love training, if you love competing and you love the particular sport that you're in. It sounds like you're just trying different things because you want to be a Paralympian but it's like – why do you want to be a Paralympian? If you don't know why you want it and you don't have compelling reasons, then what will happen is you'll just bounce around and try a bunch of different sports out. So the key is to make your list of your driving force needs. What do you really love in life? Okay, so you say you want to be a Paralympian, but why? And if you can't come up with anything that's a 10 on a scale of 1 to 10 as far as your why you say you want it or you think you want it, then guess what? You don't want to be a Paralympian. And you got to look somewhere else. What things do you love in life? What things can you say without a doubt 100% on a scale of 1 to 10, there are 10. What are those? And write those down. And what do you love about them? So let's go through the second guy's email. He says, hey, Corey, I'll get straight to the point. We all know that every man has a mission and purpose in life. But what do I do when I know my purpose, my path, but I am lazy to make the steps to achieve it? Well, this again, this is really important. If you don't love what you're doing, if you don't feel like what you're doing or what your purpose and mission is that you've come up with so far is why you were put in this earth to do it, if you don't have five or to 15 different reasons why you love it or aspects about it that you love, then you've chosen to do the wrong thing. And how do I know? When somebody tells me, oh, yes, my purpose is what I want to do and then every time they start it, they just quit and they give up. Guess what? They weren't really committed to it in the first place. They're committed to something that they like a lot. In other words, it might be a 6 on a scale of 1 to 10. It's sometimes a 6 or a 7, even an 8, even a 9. If it's not a 10, as soon as you hit your first obstacles, as soon as you hit your first rough patch, you're just like, "Eh, I don't really feel like doing this. And you just blow it off and you'll quit. Remember, you don't know what you don't know. You got to experience things. It's like what Steve Jobs said. You got to follow your heart, your curiosity, and your intuition because they somehow know what you already want to become. And he details in his biography, which I highly recommend. And if you go to the products tab on my website, you can click it. I highly recommend either get the book or the audio book and listen to it. He details the process that he went through when it came to Apple and next computers with Pixar pictures. It wasn't a straight line. He didn't just all of a sudden become a millionaire overnight. There was a process. He talked about what he experienced in college. He talked about his spiritual pursuits and how that all tied together 
with ultimately what became two of the world's greatest companies, which are Apple and Pixar Pictures, multi-billion dollar companies. I mean, for the last month, I've been doing a to-do list every single night before going to bed, but on the next day, when it comes to do to doing the fucking thing, I always tell my excuse, myself excuses why not to do it. Again, it comes back to having your reasons. You have to have emotionally compelling reasons why you want to do something. And what this tells me is based on what you're doing, you don't really have emotionally compelling reasons why you want to do something or you haven't taken the time to come up with a list. So you have a goal. Say your goal is to lose weight. Well, you're going to have pros and cons of why you want it and all the pleasure that you're going to gain by achieving it and taking the action you know you need to take and also the pain that you're going to experience and what you're going to miss out on in life if you don't do what you know you need to do. And you're going to have pro- every single goal that you write on your list of goals that you want in life – you're going to have a pros and cons list and there might be 10 or 15 things on each for each single goal. That's the process. That's how you get leverage upon yourself. And so you either don't have proper leverage on yourself or you've chosen to do something that you're really not that committed to. If it feels like work, then it ain't the right thing. If it feels like playing and you love it and you're excited about it, you'll do it because it's just fun. You don't, it doesn't matter about the money. It's like the business that I have now for the first four and a half years – I wasn't making very much money at this business at all because I didn't know how to market it properly. I didn't know how to communicate my value proposition to people because everything that I knew about advertising and marketing that worked in the real estate and the mortgage and the construction industry didn't apply to the internet, didn't apply to self-help, didn't apply to my book. And what I originally thought was this this book is great. Everybody should want to read my book. But the thing I didn't understand at the time, it's the only time people are really open – to, to learn what I got is when they've been dumped or they had a breakup. They're in pain and they want to solve that pain. So they're looking for the quick fix. What's the magic pickup line? What do I got to say to get my ex back? And then they seek and that's the time that they're ripe for. And then once they get into it, they learn all these other great things about quality of life, taking care of themselves, their body, your peer group, all those things. There's a lot more to – just saying the right thing or doing the right thing with a person of the opposite sex. It's really about becoming the kind of person that you want to attract. But telling that to somebody that's really not an emotional pain, they're like, their eyes will glaze over. They're not interested to it. And that's why many of you that have tried to recommend a book like mine to all your friends, only a small fraction of them will actually go, oh, I need to do that. Yeah, it's great. I'm going to get that book. And you lend it, you get them a copy, and like, yeah, and you're like six months later, they've read three pages. They don't have an emotionally compelling reason why. That's why they're not doing it. And I start doing the thing, I get distracted very easily, and in the end, I end up doing something else. So, how should I stop being lazy and instead start dominating my path? Well, like I said, you've got to have emotionally compelling reasons why you want something. That is the first step because if you don't have that, what happens here, you're going to write all the to-do lists in the world but if you don't have emotionally compelling reasons that you fucking love and you're passionate about and you believe in, it's, that's why you just give up because you're just not that committed to it and you haven't come up with reasons yet. So I'd say more than likely you either don't have your purpose down, you're not really clear about it yet. Or you haven't taken the time to come up with your reasons why you want it. Because without the reasons why you want something, like I said earlier, you'll just quit, you'll give up, and you won't follow through. And if you'd like to get my help personally to help you with your purpose and your mission in life, it's worth it. I know I'm expensive, but once you get this right, this is something that you're going to be doing the rest of your fucking life. Aren't you worth it? I mean, invest in yourself. Let me help you get this part of your life. Because if you get this wrong, you'd be dicking around for the rest of your life and going in the wrong direction. Something to think about. So if you'd like to get my help, go to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen on any page of my website and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon. (laughs) 